four cameras, four different rooms, one house of worship. Did I mention it's fully automated, so the client doesn't have to be on site to control the cameras, start the live stream, or anything else? In this video, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step designing and installing a live stream setup for a house of worship, and you'll see the one platform any church or synagogue can use to create an automated scheduled live streaming system for their building. A new referral reached out to me and mentioned that they had an old live streaming setup from 2018 using PTZ Optics cameras. They were outdated, dark, and apparently the audio was horrendous. They wanted to upgrade their system so that they could live stream in four different rooms in the building. So naturally, I got to work in planning out the equipment, budget, and finding the right information and vendors needed to make this all happen. It's also important to note here that for privacy reasons and out of respect to the client, I'm not going to announce the location. Step one was figuring out what they truly needed. So I sat in on a call with the executive director and a few of their staff that were familiar with the IT and AV situation. They don't have a dedicated IT or AV person on staff, so this was the first note I took. Things need to be accessible and manageable by an average person. I learned that they have four different rooms in the building where events occur, a main sanctuary, a chapel, and then two additional event spaces. They weren't interested in a multi-camera switched environment since that would mean needing to include switchers in each room and providing the manpower to run them. It's important to note that for religious reasons, they will typically avoid having to run electronics over the Sabbath or to exchange money and have someone work during the time of rest. The biggest problems to solve were one, the camera quality was terrible and some of these rooms naturally were low lighting scenarios. And two, the audio sounded really bad. And I think this was in part due to older audio setups and using internal camera microphones. I'll get to that in just a little bit. And three, only one of the four rooms had wired internet available. So many of the setups were rigged to work and they were lucky that it was working as long as it did. I'll share all of the equipment that I used in my setup below in the description, just in case you're trying to build out a similar setup. Choosing the cameras were relatively simple for me as I'm fairly familiar with the Canon PTZ cameras and I own both the CRN 500 and 300 myself. They wanted to ensure that the main sanctuary had the best image quality being used most frequently and the CRN 500 with a one inch sensor and 15X zoom fit the bill quite well. To save on budget and to suit the smaller rooms, the CRN 300 cameras made perfect sense coming in at almost half the price and providing nearly all the same things with a smaller sensor size. Quick side note, I realized the 100 model came out after this installation was planned, but it made the most sense to have cameras with SDI and HDMI connections for future proofing reasons. The streaming platform was my initial hangup. I resorted to reaching out to fellow live streamers and various Facebook groups, to find out what other churches and houses of worship were doing. I was referred to Caster quite a bit and originally planned to use their platform, but once I dove further into the client's needs, I realized that this had to change. They wanted a fully scheduled capability where the live stream would get pushed from the camera to an embedded player on their website. But we couldn't do this with Caster because the client would still have to start and stop the encoding. The beauty of the Canon cameras is they do have built-in RTMP and SRT encoding, but it's not as feature rich as we would need in order to schedule streaming to start and stop automatically at certain times. This called for a platform and encoders that were made specifically for this. In comes BoxCast. Their BoxCaster encoder comes in at around $399, and with their streaming plans, all it needed was an internet connection and HDMI. When it comes to audio, each room had a different setup, some old and some new, and I consulted with their in-house audio person to ensure that I could get an XLR output from each system. In order to avoid busting the budget, I chose not to change out any audio mixing or amplification setups, and truthfully, I'd bring in outside vendors for this because audio is not my specialty. The most important change that did have to happen is making sure that we could send an audio signal from the mixers to the camera. The Canon CRN 300 cameras take 3.5 millimeter audio inputs, while the CRN 500 can take a full-size XLR connection. To make sure that the audio came through clean and the camera could be controlled independently of any settings in the room, I chose to install the Arc Clean Box 
at each camera with 3.5 millimeter audio. The clean box helps to prevent any hum in the audio and converts balanced XLR audio inputs to unbalanced 3.5 millimeter output. Since there was only one XLR cable being run and the 3.5 millimeter output is stereo, we needed to provide a left and right XLR input, otherwise you'd only hear the audio coming out of one speaker on the live stream. The solution for this was to place a balanced XLR splitter cable from Cable Matters in between the XLR run and the clean box. Later down the road, if they upgraded their system and cared to mix and stream in stereo, some easy changes could be made. The only challenge was nearly all four rooms had mixers at the complete opposite end of the room in a back closet. This brings me to IT and infrastructure. Working with the synagogue's off-site IT team, we were able to confirm the location of the internet rack switches throughout the building. We also discovered a local vendor who could run cabling for us from the internet racks back to each room and install an ethernet port near each camera. Once I found a local company to do this, I asked if they could also hardwire audio connections for us, so we had both ethernet and XLR audio running to the cameras. I recommend if you do this in the future, make sure that there is power, audio, and internet all at the camera side. We were lucky in our setup that all cameras were within an extension cord's reach of a power outlet, but some older buildings may not have this. Here's a quick overview of each room and how they're set up. Three out of the four are essentially the same, so I'll start with those. Each room starts with the Canon CRN300 PTZ camera mounted in the back of the room and connected to power over ethernet switches for power and internet. I use the TP-Link TLSG1005P, which provides 30 watts of power per port up to 65 watts. The camera only needs 16.2 watts, so that's plenty left if we ever powered another device off the switch. It's also unmanaged, so we didn't have to do much of anything on the IT side, except for ask their IT company to assign us IP addresses and set them manually in the camera. The switch connects to the ethernet line that was run by IT and infrastructure contractors. From there, we ran power so we could power the art clean box for audio and the box cast encoder. During testing, we found that the encoder didn't like the 1080p signal coming out of the camera at 30 frames. This was a bit of a concern originally, and we haven't gotten a true answer as to why the encoder didn't like the feed. I chalk it up to a 12 foot HDMI cable or some weird reason, but our simple fix for this was to install Blackmagic 3G bi-directional converters so the signal from the camera enters the converter via HDMI and then exits the converter to go into the encoder also via HDMI. These converters gave the signal the boost that we needed and we confirmed the signal remained even after power cycling the converter and the encoder. As mentioned previously, audio involved a single XLR cable from the outlet that was installed in each room near the cameras. The XLR audio feed connected to the Cable Matters XLR splitters before entering the art clean box. From there, all we needed was a 3.5mm cable from the clean box to the cameras. The only thing that changed from the first three rooms to the fourth was that the Canon CRN500 camera has XLR inputs, so we didn't need to use the clean box to convert balanced audio to unbalanced audio. The XLR simply plugs into the inputs on the back of the camera. Last but not least was setting up the BoxCast account and adjusting camera settings. BoxCast support was phenomenal and walked the client through everything that they needed to get the encoders online. For the most part, they were plug and play and support could remotely access them when needed. Simply logging into their BoxCast account showed which encoders were online and allowed for creation of schedules so that each encoder could go live when needed. Their platform also provided us with embed codes so each player could be embedded into the client's website for the audience to view the public live stream. The only settings left were in camera. I first used the Canon camera search tool, which is a free application provided on their website. When my laptop is on the network, I can search for the cameras and it will provide me with their IP addresses for easy access. I logged into each camera and on the first login, it provides an option to set the default login and password. From there, we made sure the frame rate was set to 1080p at 30 frames, used the PTZ camera adjustment to pan, tilt, and zoom the camera, and set a default position so even in the event of a restart, the camera would go back to its position. It's in these settings that we can also give the camera a new static IP address that never changes, so 
Anytime I'm on the network or anyone else that wants to adjust the cameras, they know exactly how to access it. All the cameras can be accessed from home using a VPN to get onto the network and log into each camera. After the install was completed, most of the streaming is managed from the BoxCast Cloud platform, which the client can log into from anywhere, and there's also an app to monitor everything on the go. All in all, this was a great setup for this synagogue, and if you're looking to do something similar, feel free to grab my equipment list down below this video.